um, yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wa la akibatil lil-muttaqin wa salatu wa salamu ala rasuli rabbil alamin wa ala alihi al-tahirin wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen amma ba'd. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So on today's menu is when someone comes up to us and says hadith is da'if then what do we mean by da'if? So um, first of all, uh, backtrack because I think we haven't had a lesson for a few weeks now. Um, what are the two things that make a hadith da'if? I, I'm not asking any questions to anyone specifically, inshallah, but we'll just make a, a general thing. What are the two main reasons why hadith da'if? Yeah. So there's a weakness in the chain because of? Because there's a cut off by the chain. Or in the second one? Weakness of narrator. These are the two main reasons. And from there, there's several reasons why a hadith becomes da'if. Um, and today, we're going to talk about four main ones. Um, and the first one is tadlis, a bit of cheeky one, where um, some people do it. So the first is tadlis of shuyukh. So tadlis is the main, tadlis, the definition of tadlis is one of the reasons why a hadith is da'if. So when someone comes up to you, shoots da'if in your face, right, what they, have, they can't just say da'if in and of itself, okay, this hadith is da'if, you have to say why it's da'if. And one of the reasons of hadith being da'if is tadlis al-isnad. So many narrations which when we were talking about, um, uh, I can't remember the topic, but the, there was a topic and one of the, he, the brother was bringing the hadith thing as da'if because someone did tadlis. So tadlis is what we're going to talk about now, what tadlis actually is. So the first type of tadlis that we're going to talk about is tadlis al shuyukh <coughs> So tadlis al shuyukh is when the, the narrator, he says that so-and-so narrated to me, but he doesn't use the name which is most famous by, right? Or he associates with him something that he's not famous by, so that he's not known. Right? And there's different reasons for this, we'll come to these reasons. For example, um, I, I just sent it in the, in the group, um, these sheets here. So this is a famous, <clears throat> so there was Al-Harith ibn Abi Usama, who was the narrator of the hadith. Right? He narrates from Abu Bakr ibn Abid Dunya. <clears throat> So Abu Bakr ibn Abi Dunya is a famous muhaddith, famous narrator of hadith. But he has many names, like some of our brothers do. Right? <laughs> so sometimes, Harith ibn Abi Usama, sometimes he'll say, Abu Bakr and Amawi narrated to me. And sometimes. Sometimes he'll say, Abdullah ibn Ubaid narrated to me. Sometimes he'll say, Abdullah ibn Abi Sufyan al-Amawi narrated to me. Sometimes he'll say, Abu Bakr ibn Sufyan al-Kufi narrated to me. But all of these guys are the same guy, right? But when he says different names, it's like he's narrating from different people. For example, if I said, Hamza narrated to me, right? Then I said, Amir narrated to me. <laughs> then I say, Wahid narrated to me. Then I say, Mian narrated to me. We all know this brother has so many names, it's the same person. But the deception there with Tadlis, it's like you're narrating from some, you're saying, so-and-so narrated to me with a different name than they're usually used. So that's why you're giving the perception that it's someone different, right? People do this for many reasons. It could be that the person who they're narrating from is a weak narrator, right? He has weakness in him. So that's why they're using a different name so that people won't know who he is. But, and then it, the, the thing is, sometimes when they use a different name, it can be similar to someone else's name who is actually a strong narrator. So then they try to trick you, a little bit of a cheeky one, saying it's a sahih, but it's actually not sahih. So this is an example where Al-Harith ibn Abi Usama narrated from Abu Bakr ibn Abi Dunya, but he said once, Abu Bakr narrated to me. Then he said Abdullah ibn Ubay. Then he said Abdullah ibn Sufyan. Then he said Abu Bakr ibn Abi Sufyan. So yeah, all of these are true. They're all the names of him, but they're different names. So <coughs> before I go on... <coughs> Why do you think people would do that? I said one of the reasons. What would be the motives for doing this tadlis? What do you guys think? So why would I, I've already said one reason, but why would I say so-and-so narrated to me and use a different name than he's more famous by? So you can tell people he's got more chains. What? More chains. So 
can yeah, so he can say to people, oh, so if, if I say, okay, rather than me just saying Al Harith ibn Osama saying Abu Bakr ibn Abi Dunya narrated to me, he can say, so and so narrated to me, and then so and so, and then so and so. It looks like he's giving an illusion that he's got many teachers. Right, so this guy is one sick muhaddis because he went to so many different countries, heard from so many different people. So he must be a great narrator because he's got so many teachers. That's one of the reasons. There's a good reason where the reason why the same narrator uses different names, saying that so and so narrated to me, so and so narrated to me, so and so narrated to me, but in fact they mean it was it was actually the same guy. One of them is so they give an illusion that they have many teachers. What's another reason? What do you guys think? Why would people do it at least? Natural mistake. Could be a mistake. Could be a mistake that you they actually forgot the name of the individual. They forgot the most famous name of the individual. And then hence they they said, okay, what was his kunya? What was his father? He had a son called Habib, Abu Habib, for example. That's what you called him, right? So it could be that. could be a natural mistake. Why else do you guys think? What you said, to give the impression that a, uh, a daif person is a more sahih person. For example, if they were to say, um, I heard from, I don't know, Abu Bakr. Yeah. Abu Bakr narrated so and so. If my name was, uh, yeah, if Abu Bakr was a kunya for another name. <coughs> yeah. That's one of the reasons that you say, <coughs> so for example, you narrated to me, I'm going to take hadith from you. You narrated from so and so. So I won't say, okay, um, Ahmed narrated for me, for example, Ahmed narrated to me this particular hadith, because he's a weak narrator, right? This guy used to do a lot of, a um, little bit dodgy stuff sometimes. So maybe, let me, let me not mention him by his famous name, let me say, oh, Abu Talha. Maybe he had uh, some, his people used to call him Abu Talha. So say, Abu Talha narrated to me. So the person looking at the chain will be like, okay, we know that Ahmed is a weak narrator, but Abu Talha, we don't really know him. Or maybe there's another guy called Abu Talha who is actually a strong narrator, mm. who he did actually meet at one point over time. Mm. So it gives the illusion that it's not, it's someone else basically. Mm. So if it's a weak narrator, you're skipping the weak narrator, <coughs> and your hadith looks strong. That's one of the motives. Any of the motives? Yeah. Fear of? This is actually a very good one. I didn't think about it until you, you taught me. It was on the list. So I think it was Hassan Basri who never used to, who, who didn't used to narrate from a particular person because of fear for, of, of like capture and stuff like that. They never used to narrate particular hadith. Could be because of that. So it could be because of fear of persecution. It's a very good one. Not an obvious one, but good. Any others? Okay, for the first, this is some ones that I've got down. Um, <clears throat> first is the narrator is weak or abandoned. We mentioned that. If the narrator, narrator is weak, da'if or matruk, means you completely leave them, then, you, then the person can just say a different name than he actually has. The student narrated loads from this single narrator so as to avoid repetition. So if you keep on saying Haddathana, uh, Hamza narrated to me, Hamza narrated to me, Hamza narrated to me, it sounds you're like repeating yourself a lot, that you only took all your hadith from one particular person, mm. or if he's got mistakes and stuff. So just to show that you've got many teachers, that's another thing. Another one is, this is a kind of a, a, a funny one, the narrator is younger than them. So if so-and-so is, is younger than me and I'm taking hadith from him, Sometimes you don't want to show that you took hadith from a younger guy. Obviously in hadith, uh, hadith uh, in the muhaddithin world, in the world of muhaddithun, when you take hadith from people, it's not about age. Obviously some of, uh, some of the teachers are younger than the, the students. But at the same time, some people thought, okay, this person is younger than me, I don't want to kind of, is that, is that kind of thing. So for that reason, <coughs> another reason is there was a kafafu between the two. It's a couple of words, I don't know, I wrote it. So there's, there was like a minor, so so-and-so had a student, he used to narrate from him all the time, and then something happened between them, right? And for that reason, they don't use them, he, he doesn't use his name anymore, he uses a name that is not obvious, that it's this person who's narrating to me. So like, <clears throat> this happened uh, with Abu Yusuf and Imam Muhammad. So from the two Hanafi Imams, Imam uh, Muhammad used to say, Haddathani Thiqa, the, the, the strong one or the trustworthy one narrated to me, but he never used to mention Abu Yusuf's name because of something that happened between them. This is mentioned in Sharh Siyar al-Kabir in the beginning. Um, another reason is that you're not 100% sure that you narrated for them, that you narrated from them. 
So <clears throat> it could be, I went to such and such a country, but that just actually shows one thing. It shows that you're narrating from so many people, right, that you're not sure if you took from a particular sheikh. So it could be the fact that you're narrating to someone, and you're narrating from someone, but you're not sure if you've heard this hadith from him or not, right? Because you were relying on your memory, or you couldn't find the sahifa that you wrote in. So it could be that fact. And that's the reason why you're not 100% sure, that's why you use another name, but you think you did. So you're using that. But again, the hadith scholars later on will know that you had a weak memory at some point, and then they, they'll understand where you... Uh, where, where the garbar kind of was. Next is the narrator is still alive. The narrator is still alive. So <clears throat> if I'm narrating a hadith to you, this is not a good thing, right? But some people do this. So say I'm taking a hadith from you and I'm narrating it, this hadith to my student. What's stopping the student from going to the guy I narrated from? Right, if I'm alive. So that's the reason why some people would do tadlis. So you don't go to the guy who I got it from. Right, because obviously you want everyone wants a higher chain, and that's from from the Sunnah of the Muhaddithin to have a closer closer connection to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you would just go to the guy if he was alive. So this is one of the reasons why they used to do tadlis. And <clears throat> number seven is pretend they have many teachers, give the illusion. We already mentioned that. But number eight, this is one of the things that could be uh, the case because Imam Bukhari did tadlis shuyukh. He mentioned. One guy, he would narrate from one time, he mentioned him with a different name, he did it in another place. So Imam Bukhari did it, why would that kind of be? So the scholars write, the reasons why he did it, let's ask, why do you think he would do it? Why would Imam Bukhari do Tadlis al-Shuyukh? Any ideas? So he would narrate from someone, and then he'd, he'd use a different name when he narrates from them somewhere else, but it's the same person. He did it to expand on the biography of the narrator so that people know, okay, this guy was also called this, he was also called this, right? He did it to expand on the biography of the narrator and this wasn't a bad thing when, when you do it like that. So <clears throat> these were the reasons for, these were actually, this was actually Tadlisu Shuyukh. So when, what's Tadlisu Shuyukh? What's Tadlisu Shuyukh? This Tadlisu Shuyukh. When you narrate from someone, with a name other than the name which they're famous by, right? To give the illusion that it's not them. That's tadlis shuyukh right? And this is one of the reasons why people call a hadith da'if, right? The second type of tadlis is tadlis isnad tadlis isnad is when <coughs> you, com- yeah, no you completely miss a guy off. Right? This is a bit cheeky as well, because it could be that I actually heard from Fahim, Right? So, brother narrated, narrated to me, who narrated from him, who narrated from him, and we, we're hearing a hadith. It could be the fact that one hadith, when he was really old, I was really young, I heard one hadith from him. So everyone knows we met, everyone knows he narrated hadith from me. Everyone knows that, correct? But, you want uh, people to think that there's another hadith, right, which you know is from his hadith. But you actually heard it through a longer chain. So he narrated from you, who narrated from him. But you just say, oh, Fahim narrated to me. Or from Fahim. When you say from Fahim, it could be that there's people in the middle, but it could be that it's direct. So in that sense, you're missing out a few guys. So this is Tadlis al-Isnad, right? Uh, so there's, there's a person called A'mash. It's in, uh, so if you look on the group, it's on the, on the notes as well. I've given you this one, this paper. So A'mash, his name was Suleiman ibn Mihran. He used to be a person who used to do Tadlis, Tadlis al-Isnad. Tadlis al-Isnad is when you miss someone out in the middle completely, right? To give the illusion that you actually heard from them, but you actually didn't, right? So A'mash, he did hear some hadith from Mujahid. Mujahid was who? The student of Ibn Abbas, who is the student of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So A'mash did do um, Tadlis, right? He was a guy who used to miss people out in the middle. And, um, but what was the reason for A'mash, A'mash doing Tadlis? And how did he do Tadlis? Uh, Khatib al-Baghdadi narrates in Al-Kifaya fi ulm al-Riwai, he gives this example. He said that um, there was a scholar called uh, Abu Muawiyah. So 
Khatib Baghdadi narrates from his uh, to, with his chain to uh, Ibn Ammar. So Abu Muawiyah used to go uh, on journeys and used to go elsewhere, and he used to say, "Amash, rest of my students, all my hadith take it from Amash, right?" But Amash was a guy who used to leave bits out in the middle. He used to leave people out in the middle, and Ibn Ammar actually clocked him doing it once. So this is when what, this is how he actually clocked him. So Al Amash. I did hear hadith from Mujahid, but he didn't hear that many hadith, a lot of hadith. <coughs> there's this one particular hadith, which is a hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reported to have said, مِنْ إِجَابِ الْمَغْفِرَةِ إِطْعَامُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ إِطْعَامُ الْمُسْلِمِ السَّغْبَانِ <coughs> From the things that necessitate forgiveness is to feed uh, hungry Muslims. So this is a thing, it's a virtuous thing, it's one of the virtues of feeding people, right? Inshallah, so we should go on Sundays, inshallah, to feed people on the Hove uh, Pia, because it's something that we should do. So this is from the hadith. So Al-A'mash narrates this hadith. Al-A'mash narrates this hadith, but he, he, he says, Mujahid narrated to me. He said, Mujahid narrated to me. But he actually heard it from Hisham, from Saeed Al-Allaf, from Mujahid. So there were two people in the middle. So it's like me, this hadith, I heard it from you. Who heard it from you? Who heard it from you? But I just say, I heard it from him. Or I just say, from him. To give the illusion that I actually got this hadith from him. I did hear other hadith from him, but not this particular hadith. Right? So, in that sense, I, I'm trying to give the illusion. This is called Tadlisul Isnad. And then, so he left uh, two people out. He left Hisham and he left Saeed al Allah. But he just said directly, Mujahid narrated to me. So this is uh, Tadlisul Isnad. So this is another type of tadlis. And a different type of tadlis is tadlisus taswiyah. So tadlisus taswiyah is one of the motives of tadlis, we said it before, is that if a person is da'if, right, but they're in between two trustworthy people, if I just miss out that guy, it will look like the hadith is actually sahih. For example, I'm narrating the hadith from this brother, right? Who narrates a hadith from this brother? Who narrates a hadith from this brother? Who narrates from this brother? This brother, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, inshallah. He narrates from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? So, Sahih. A sahih, I'm a Sahih narrator. He's a Sahih narrator. Authentic, good, reliable, everything. 100%. This brother is, mm, you know, a <laughs> little bit uh, bad memory. Yeah? But then he is a Sahih narrator. He's a Sahih narrator. He's a Sahih narrator. He's a Sahih narrator. I'm thinking, you know what? If I miss this guy out, and I just say, I just mentioned he heard from him, he heard from him, he heard from him, he heard from him, people are going to think this hadith is sahih. Right? This is called tadlis with taswiyah. To make this hadith sahih, I miss the da'if guy out in the middle. Mm. And people actually did that. Right? Um, so, there's a hadith from a scholar called Ishaq ibn Rahway. Right? He's a famous muhaddith, famous scholar of hadith. He narrated a hadith from his teacher, Baqiya. So Baqiya was one of those, he, he looked at hadith, right? And he's like, oh, I can make this a bit, you know, fix this up a bit, a little bit. <laughs> make it sahih little sometimes. So Baqiya, Baqiya, what he did is, he narrated from Ubaidullah ibn Amr. Ubaidullah ibn Amr is, is one of, a narrator as well. But he used a different name. He did tadlis. He said, Abu, uh, he said, Abu Wahab al-Asadi narrated to me. Abu Wahab al-Asadi, his, oh, his name, his, he was, it was another name for Ubaidullah ibn Umar, um, Amr. Ubaidullah ibn Amr was also called Abu Wahab al-Asadi. But that's not the name that he was famous by. He wasn't really generally associated with the tribe of Banul Asad. right? It was just that he wanted to give the illusion that he, this guy is actually a different guy. Because the reason why is because... Uh, Ubaidullah ibn Amr narrates from Ishaq ibn Abi Farwa and is, what do you think Ishaq ibn Abi Farwa is? Strong or weak? Da'if, that's why he missed him out. So he, he narrates from his teacher, but he's called his teacher a different name. Because if people knew who his actual teacher was, they will know that his teacher heard from a guy who is weak. Because people know who the teachers of someone are, who the students of someone are. But if I'm trying to make him... If I'm using a different name for him, then it gives the illusion that it's not the same person. Right? So, Baqiyya narrates from 
Ubaidullah ibn Amr, but he says, Abu Wahab al-Asadi narrated to me, and he misses out Ishaq ibn Abi Farwa, and he just said, Nafi, who is a slave of Ibn Umar, the son of Umar, who narrates on the messengers of Allah, right? But we know that Ubaidullah ibn Amr never, never, um, never met Nafi, so he couldn't have narrated from him, right? But that's only when you know dates of death and, and, and dates of birth, when you're able to recognize these sort of things. And uh, another example, okay, this is an example of something else, I think. Yeah, this example of Mukate. Okay, so what are the t- uh, mudallisin? A person who does tadlis, we call them a mudallis. A mudallis. We can't say every mudallis is the same. Right, because some people did tadlis for good reasons, some people did it for bad reasons. Right, so we can't just say mudallis da'if straight away, because this is wrong. You can't say every mudallis is da'if, because remember, why did Imam Bukhari do tadlis for? So, so the to expand in his biography. Yeah, to expand in the biography of the narrator. Yeah, so the person who I'm narrating from, I'm expanding on his biography. I'm saying he was also known by this name. And by this name, so I'm, I'm trying to show more information that I have about this person, right? That's not a really like a bad motive. Some people did, they wanted to like make this hadith a bit sahih sometimes, because they had their own agendas, because people did have agendas. You know, people want to pray a certain way, they said, no, this hadith is sahih, brother. Yeah? But they, they saw a little bit da'if there, and they went, okay, let me take this brother out, make this hadith sahih, you know? The Messenger of Allah prayed like this, you know, hadith da'if, your hadith da'if, my hadith sahih. They wanted to do this kind of thing, that's why they did tadlis. But not everyone of the people who did tadlis, the mudallis, wasn't the same. They had different stages. So generally they categorize into five. Obviously this is not like an exhaustive one. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani mentions this. There are some scholars who rarely did tadlis. Right? For example, Yahya ibn Sa'id al-Ansari and Hisham ibn Urwa, they rarely did tadlis. And <coughs> some scholars, there's a second category, is those who were imams did less tadlis, they didn't do tadlis much, or they only did tadlis from people who they knew were trustworthy. Right? They did tadlis from people who they knew were trustworthy. So this, this is what you call tadlis or thiqa. Right? This is a, a term where so and so scholar did tadlis. Right? For example, um, Sufyan ibn Uyayna. He was a famous scholar of hadith, but he did tadlis. But he only did tadlis, for example, I'm narrating from him, he narrated from him, he narrated from him all the way, and I just miss out and I go to, straight to him, right? Just miss out this narrator in the middle. He only did tadlis when this person, this person was authentic. You might ask, why would he do it then? It's the, the other reason that I mentioned, you know, expanding on biography, things like that. You know, there was a kafafu between the two. You know, uh, it could be that he's still alive. There are some other reasons why it could be could be done. Or people who did tadlis very little. Sufyan al-Thawri did tadlis very little. The third category is people who abundantly engage in tadlis. Like they did tadlis a lot. Too much tadlis. Right? So, so in, in there, there were people who were absolutely rejected. So we know if this guy narrated hadith, he did tadlis. But say, we're not going to accept it. Da'if straight away, you know, hadith da'if. Again, second type is accepted, but only when they said, we heard from so-and-so, explicitly state we heard. So if I say, the brother, I heard from the brother, who narrated me from the brother, who narrated me from so-and-so, if I heard them explicitly, then only will you accept their tadlis. But, so the first category of these mudallisin, Ex- absolutely rejected. The second type is you accept it, but only when they explicitly heard. And example of these are Qatada and Abu Ishaq al Sabi'i, who was one of the narrators in the Hadith books. The fourth type is it's not accepted except if they explicitly heard. And this are, these are people like Hajjaj ibn Artat and Muhammad ibn Ishaq. Do we know who Muhammad ibn Ishaq is? I'm not asking anyone specifically, but do we know Muhammad ibn Ishaq? Maghazi, Imam al Maghazi, Muhammad ibn Ishaq. So Imam Bukhari said, Muhammad ibn Ishaq was a'lam al nas bi Maghazi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He was the most knowledgeable when it came to the battles of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa This was Muhammad ibn Ishaq, but he's a mudallis. 
He's the guy who did Tadlis, but he's Imam Bukhari's teacher. And he said, but the Muhaddithin say his Tadlis is not accepted, only if he says he explicitly heard, then it's accepted. And then the fifth type is, uh, they're weak for another reason, maybe they were untrustworthy, or maybe they had a weak memory, but Tadlis adds to their weakness. Like for example, Ibn Lahia, we mentioned him a couple of weeks ago. Ibn Lahia is the dude whose house got burnt, and his books got burnt. So when he used to narrate hadith afterwards, he used to make mistakes because he used to narrate from his memory. And this is, you know, he erred in his memory uh, uh, ba- uh, ba'd after uh, ikhtilat happened. So this is tadlis, and this is one of the reasons why you have um, sakat in isnad. Why you have a disconnection in the chain. First thing, tadlis. And then we have, uh, from the four categories, hadith munqati'a. So hadith munqati'a, we've already, it means disconnected. What's hadith munqati'a? Disconnected hadith. It's one of the main reasons why hadith da'if. The sunnah doesn't continue. So, for example, you narrate it to me, and then there's a big gap. Then you say, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi said, this is a hadith munqati'a, right? It's broken, it's disconnected in its chain. And um, there are various types of hadith munqati'a. And there's several examples here, inshallah. We're not going to go into the examples, because we understand what it means. One of the types of hadith munqati'a is hadith mu'dal. So from the types which are disconnected, so disconnected chains, a big disconnection. There are a few types within there. One of them is hadith mu'dal. Hadith Mu'dal is the hadith we already actually talked about. Um, from the things that necessitate forgiveness is al Muslim al Sabir that uh is to uh, from the things that necessitate forgiveness is to feed a Muslim who is hungry. So Mu'dal narration is when you have two people or more than two people in continuity Right? That have been uh, removed from the chain. Like here. So Al A'mash, he removed Sa'id uh, Hisham and he removed Sa'id Al Allaf. He just said, Mujahid narrated to me. Right? He removed these two guys and he said, Al A'mash said, said that Mujahid narrated to me. He missed these two guys. So what hadith is this? Hadith? Mu'dal. Hadith Mu'dal. It's a type of Munqati. But it's, uh, hadith is mu'dal uh, when two or more narrators have been omitted from the chain. And this is an example that we've already done. Um, okay, yeah, same. This hadith as well. Uh, so you have, Tirmidhi said, Muhammad ibn Ubaid al-Maharibi and Abu Sa'id ibn al-Ashaj narrated to me from Abdul Salam ibn Harb, who narrated to me from Khusayf, who narrated to me from Abu Ubaidah, who narrated to me from Abdullah, who narrated to me from the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abu Abdullah was the father of Abu Ubaidah, but he didn't hear hadith from his dad. But people who are looking, and they're looking at date of death and date of birth, if you're just looking and you think, okay, it's possible that he could have heard, right? It's possible that he could have heard from him. So we'll just add, so it looks like when you look at the hadith, uh, narrator, when you look at the two hadith narrators, you can think and you see, okay, it's possible that he heard from his father, but he never heard from his father. Another example is Ali ibn Hujr, this is in Tirmidhi as well, uh, Imam Tirmidhi's teacher Ali ibn Hujr narrates to him from Ma'mar ibn uh, Sulaiman al Raqqi, from Hajjaj ibn Artat, from Abdul Jabbar ibn Wa'il, from his father. But the thing is, Al Wa'il, who is Abdul Jabbar ibn Wa'il, Right, Al Wa'il, who is his dad, he narrated from his dad. It's said that he narrated from his dad, but he actually was born before his dad died. Sorry, he was born after his dad died. So he, it was impossible for him to narrate from him. But if you're just looking at whose son was who in the books, the biography books, you're going to think, oh yeah, it's actually, it's actually quite possible that he heard from him. So how do we know that this, these sort of things occurred? Why people were missed in the chain? How do you think we'd know? We would compare to other known chains because one hadith is not just narrated from one person. If I'm a muhaddith at, the, at those early times, I'm narrating. I'm not just narrating a hadith to one individual. I'm narrating it to so many individuals. Who are narrating to so many individuals? Do you understand? So you look at compare to other chains of the same hadith. How else would you tell a hadith? Uh, a hadith is munqati and uh, mudallas, however. 
How else could we tell? Dates of death. Dates of death, dates of birth, but how do we know? Later on, this guy, he did tadlis. How would we know he did tadlis? He can be like, Muwaha, I've invented this hadith. <laughs> you know, I've, I've, I've corrupted them. People, you might laugh, right? But people have actually, on their deathbed, have said, Oh, Muwaha, they were not in these words, but they said, We've invented so many hadith. We've literally invented so many hadith. Right? Because we wanted to spread corruption. People have said it on their deathbed. But you're not, never going to find it. You're never going to find those hadith which we mixed up. Some people even said, some people even narrated, they go, some people are like, oh, we invented so many hadith for the Hanafi fiqh. Sorry, we've invented so many hadith for the fadail of Quran. The reason is, people started learning the Hanafi fiqh and started going super like, you know, immersed in the Hanafi fiqh and they stopped reading Quran. So we invented so, so many hadith for the fadail of Quran. That's why, if you look at the fadail of Quran, one of the most invented hadith in any subject is hadith of fadail of Quran. Because people actually thought they're doing something good, right? They thought if we... Fadail of Quran is the virtues of Quran. Right, for example, if you read Surah Yaseen one time, it's, if you read Surah Yaseen ten times, it's like you're going to get everything in the world. You know, if you read Surah, um, if you read particular Surah four times, you're going to get this amount of reward, you know. And from the latest things, if you read, uh, like, if people would invent it for different reasons. For example, if you read this Surah on the day of Jummah, right, before the, uh, after, Maghrib, after Asr, before Maghrib, you will get the world and entire everything in it. And you know, certain hadiths, you can actually tell they are because it's a lot exaggerated. We shouldn't think, so we shouldn't think that every hadith in the virtues of Quran is fabricated because it's not true. A lot of hadith, they are true. But people have actually said, I've invented so many hadith because people started getting mashhul in the fiqh of Abu Hanifa. They started getting immersed in the fiqh of Abu Hanifa and they stopped reading Quran so I'm inventing so many hadith and they thought they were doing a good thing but we only find out when they admit it so it could be that they admit it the person who's doing the, themselves they admit that we we remove people from the chain we did tadlis or this hadith in Munkhati. but it could be that a hadith scholar who's an experienced hadith scholar the likes of Imam Bukhari the likes of Imam Muslim right they sort of able to pinpoint because of their mastery in hadith. And that's why when we talk about masters of hadith, we don't mean someone who just narrated like so many hadith. Okay, so and so narrated, he memorized a hundred hadith. MashaAllah, very, very good, right? But you have to be able to know the chains, be able to have the applied knowledge, you know? It's all well and good knowing, you know, these knowledge from our, for, for our tests, you know? For the KT, you learn all this knowledge, right? MashaAllah, you know, you know the books by heart. But once you get on the wards, SubhanAllah, it all goes down the window. <laughs> so you need to have the knowledge. This is all of us, by the way. All of us. It's all of us. When you learn the knowledge, when you learn the knowledge, you have to be able to apply it as well. And this is what Al-Bukhari, this is what Al-Muslim had. Um, so how, things like this, for example, someone, someone narrated from their father, right? Imam Muslim, Hajjaj ibn Muslim al Kushayri, the one that we had the Maqra a few weeks ago, uh, Imam Muslim, one of his conditions for hadith to be sahih is obviously the reliability of two of the narrators. But it's like if someone narrated from their dad, it's possible that they met, right? So he said, possibility of them meeting, that's enough for me for the hadith to be sahih. But for example, Al Bukhari, Abu Hatim al Razi, uh, Yahya ibn Ma'in, these other scholars, they said, no, there has to be some verification that they, he narrated hadith from him, right? Has to be another level, you know, another level of verification of hadith. Right, okay, I think I finished the sheets. Oh, nah. One more thing. So, Al-Mu'dal, what's hadith Mu'dal? Let's see, short to memory. Two or, more Two or more narrators are dropped. Two or more narrators have been dropped. Right? Meaning they've been omitted from the chain. And the example of hadith model is the hadith that we mentioned before. Um, okay, hadith model. Munqati, we mentioned. There's two more. Okay, hadith mu'allaq. This is the hadith where, you know, you know I said about the hadith about music in Sahih al-Bukhari. Right? I mentioned there's a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari about music and people use it for istidlal. People say, oh look, well, we're not going to go into the controversies of, you know, the fiqh of music, but I just want to give you the example, and I want to, next time when we talk about this, inshallah, 
I want to tell you that this hadith is hadith mu'allaq, because this is how this hadith is presented in Sahih al-Bukhari. Right? So, al-mu'allaq, first let me tell you what hadith mu'allaq is, and then I'll tell you this particular narration in Sahih al-Bukhari that is mu'allaq, and then the kind of far'iyat of this, what, what the, like the outcomes of this are. First of all, al-mu'allaq, man allaq al-shay' bi shay أَيْنَاطَهُ وَرَبَتَهُ بِهِ وَجَعْلَهُ مُعَلَّقًا وَسُمِّيَ هَذَا السَّنَ الْمُعَلَّقًا بِسَبَبِ اِتِصَالِهِ مِنَ الْجِهَةِ الْعُلْيَ فَقَتْ مِنْ قِطَعِهِ مِنَ الْجِهَةِ الدُّنْيَا فَسَارَ كَشَيْهِ الْمُعَلَّقْ بِالسَّقَفْ وَنَحْوِهِ Mu'allaq literally means suspended, okay? Something that's hanging. You know, this thing, latkahua, they say, you know? This thing is uh, this hanging down. So it means, what this actually means is, I'm narrating a hadith, Right? And I say, there's a big cut-off, and I say, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. As-salamu alaykum, alaykum as-salam. Is it here? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, inshaAllah. Yeah. InshaAllah, shukran. Um, so, hadith, مُعَلَّقْ is مَحُذِفَ مِن مَبْدَ إِسْنَادِهِ رَاوِن فَأَكْثَرْ عَلَى التَّوَالِي So, from the beginning of the chain, you have so many people that have been omitted. So, it could be that you emit the whole sanad. For example, me, 1400 years later, I say, the Messenger وسلم, said so and so, this and this. Right? Thing is, Imam Bukhari does this. Imam Bukhari will say, the Messenger وسلم, said, and he said this, he narrated the hadith. Right? Example, uh, Al Bukhari said, that Abu Musa said, غَطَّ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ رُكْبَتَيْهِ حِينَ دَخَلَ عُثْمَانُ That the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he covered his, his knees when Uthman came in. You know the famous hadith where Abu Bakr came in, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi didn't cover, and then Uthman, and then uh, Umar came in, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi didn't cover, and then uh, Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala who came in, and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi quickly went run to cover his, um, his knees, right? And then... Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and was like, my dad came in, Umar came in, Uthman came in and you covered your knees and he said, how can I not have haya and modesty from that individual whom even the angels have modesty from? So the Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But anyway, this hadith mentioned by Imam Bukhari, he said, Babun ma yudhkaru fil fakhid. And then he said, Abu Musa said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, and he narrated the hadith, right? The Messenger covered him. But then, Imam Bukhari never met Abu Musa. He passed away over a hundred years, maybe two, three hundred years after Abu Musa. Uh, he, he was born maybe two hundred years after Abu Musa passed away. He didn't narrate this chain. This is one of the reasons why a hadith is da'if. If the hadith is munqat, this is the type of munqat. So is the hadith, da'if hadith in Bukhari? Because Imam Bukhari did that. He's mentioned the chain. Okay. Okay, well, well, inshallah, bismillah, bismillah. So Imam Bukhari sometimes, he says, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this, but in other places he narrates the chain, like the Sheikh said, other places Imam Bukhari does narrate the chain. But sometimes he doesn't. Yeah, Fiqh al-Bukhari fi Babi, I know. But I'm saying sometimes, Imam Bukhari will say that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this. Like the famous hadith, controversy I know, but I'm a controversial guy. Hadith on music. Right, the hadith of music. I'm not going to go into the fiqh of it, but Al Bukhari people say, oh, the hadith that prohibits music is in Bukhari. It's true, it's in Bukhari. No one's saying a word in that. But this hadith is hadith mu'allaq, which means Bukhari didn't narrate it with a chain. Now, the scholars have said Al Bukhari would either narrate it elsewhere, or other scholars have found uh, authentic chains to it, right? And other scholars have put it in. According to Bukhari, so why would Bukhari do this? Why do you think he'd do this? Why would Bukhari just say the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? If he's a guy who only reason he'd narrate this hadith if he's 100% authentic, you know, that was the purpose of his book, right? One of the, pur- again, we spoke about Al-Bukhari last time. In my understanding, Al-Bukhari's book wasn't just an innocuous book of documentation of hadith because all the hadith were around at his time anyway. Mm. He wasn't just to document, okay, sahih hadith. Yes, that was one of the objectives. But the main point of Imam Bukhari, 
uh, of narrating this hadith because he repeated so many hadith. What would be the point of that? Is to extract things from the hadith. Is to understand the hadith. To sift through like and find points, fine points from the hadith. So he he narrates one hadith about eleven times. Why would he do that? So again, going back to the question, why would Bukhari say the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this, and he didn't narrate a chain? If his point was to narrate authentic hadith, why do you think, brothers? Why would Imam Bukhari do this? He didn't have the chain. But then his book is Sahih. He, the, he, because he didn't. He did have other books of hadith. Like for example, he did have Al Adab Al Mufrad. Where even then, there's Daif hadith in there. Everyone knows, right? But why? It's, he wouldn't narrate a hadith which he didn't have a chain for, right? And he wouldn't even forget because he had a phenomenal memory. So why would he? That could be the case. It could be the case that Imam Bukhari mentioned it elsewhere. Remember, I said Bukhari repeats himself sometimes. So it could be the case he's narrated the same hadith before with a full chain, and now he's just given a quick, you know, reminder: go back there, check this, or I've got this hadith but from a different chain. Another uh, point I wanted to mention is Al Bukhari has certain conditions for hadith to be authentic, but he has more rigorous conditions than the general threshold for authenticity. So you have a general threshold for authenticity that if a hadith fulfills these criteria, then the hadith is authentic. Correct? But Al-Bukhari had an even higher threshold for it. Because he never used to narrate from people who, you know, used to, there was a famous story, we don't know Allah Ta'ala, Alam, I can't remember reading it anytime here, but I'm just mentioning it to you, that Al-Bukhari went to narrate from this so-and-so person, and he saw him doing this to his animal, but he had no food in his hand. So Al-Bukhari said, I'm not going to narrate from this guy. That could be that, that case. Because even we read, uh, I remembered an example from Rafwa Takmil. Um, so it's mentioned that some people, they had a threshold for making someone inauthentic, that's not the standard threshold. Some of it was like kind of ridiculous. That person, someone said that, okay, it's so-and-so, I think it was Al-A'mash actually. <laughs> it's kind of ironic. But Al-A'mash said, or I think it was him, he said that if a person rides a Turkish horse, I'm not going to narrate from him. It was Al-A'mash. <laughs> from, if he rides a Turkish horse, why? Because this person is engulfed in the dunya. He has a big Audi. Now he's not going to narrate from this guy now. <laughs> Bismillah. Micro Bismillah. How did he know? Not going to narrate from him because he's too in, in, into the dunya. You know? So we're not going to narrate from a guy who's, who's this. But this is a lower threshold for hadith. But Imam Bukhari had rigorous, uh, rigorous uh, criteria for authenticity. So that's why he must have said, this hadith is sahih according to him. Right? This hadith is sahih according to him. But he didn't have a chain that fulfilled his criteria. Right? So this hadith is sahih according to in general, but it didn't fulfill his criteria for this particular book. That's why he said, the Messenger Wasallam said, because it's a sahih hadith. Again, the hadith on music falls into this criteria. Wallahu ta'ala alam, we'll look into it further. But I just want to mention as a side point, the hadith on music for, is a hadith mu'allaq. So when people say, it's in sahih al-Bukhari, it doesn't mean... I, okay, I didn't mention the second part. So Imam Bukhari has two ways of have, having hadith mu'allaq. Once he says, sometimes he says... Qala, the Masihatul Jazm we call in Arabic. So Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said Tasihatul Jazm. So this hadith that we mentioned about Ghatta uh Ghatta Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rukbatayhi that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um covered his uh, knees. That's hadith Mu'allaq bi Sihatil Jazm, right? When he said the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this. Another type of him doing a mu'allaq is when he said, it is said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said this. Qila, we call this sigha to tamrif, right? It is said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa used to do this. It is mentioned about the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa So he uses a passive voice, yeah? He uses a passive voice. One is active voice, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said this, sigha to jazam, right? One is a passive voice, sigha to tamrif. So he says, it is said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said this. The scholars have said, okay, I don't know, I can't, I didn't read what he, this scholar said. Okay, he, he said the same thing that I was saying. Okay, he said, وَمَا ذُكِرَ بِسِيغَةِ التَّمْرِيذِ كَقِيلَ وَذُكِرَ وَهُكِيَ فَلَيْسَ فِيهِ حُكْمٌ, uh, حكم بِسِيحَتِهِ عَنِ الْمُضَافِ إِلَيْهِ بَلْ فِيهِ الصَّحِيْهِ وَالْحَسَنِ وَالْضَعِيْفِ لَكِنْ لَيْسَ فِيهِ حَدِيثٌ وَاهٍ لِوُجُودِهِ فِي الْكِتَابِ الْمُصَمَّ بِالصَّحِيْهِ So he says that, 
if Bukhari said that it was narrated or with a passive voice, it's these passive voice narrations include Sahih Hadith. They include Hasan Hadith, but they also include Daif Hadith. So question, does Sahih al-Bukhari include Daif Hadith? The muhaqqat answer, so people will say, people will say, ma dhukira, when Bukhari says, bisigat al-tamrid, right? People will say that, okay, some other muhadith has found it with an authentic chain. And you know, right in the beginning of this book, we talked about mustakhrajat, right? The mustakhraj of Abu Nu'aym al-Asfahani of Sahih Muslim and, and of Sahih al-Bukhari. The other, other scholars, for example, Sahih al-Bukhari narrated his chain all the way back to the Prophet for this particular hadith. Another scholar found an independent chain just to prove the first one's authenticity. Do you get me? So this is called a mustakhraj. So people have done this. This is a work that was done after these authors have passed away. So some people have said that the mu'allaqat with sigat al-tamrid, they have all been, found to, all been found to be authentic. But again, it's one of those things people think, oh God, you're disrespecting Bukhari, the book that is called Sahih. You're saying it's not going to say all Sahih hadith in there. But the actual answer is, uh, the scholars also mentioned Laysa fihi hadithun wa, the, wahin. There's no hadith that is completely fabricated in there Remember, right in the beginning I said about And we always talk about it About hadith when it's being connected And when it's being disconnected And we say hadith da'if, hadith sahih It doesn't mean that the messenger wasallam Didn't say the hadith da'if It could be that the hadith da'if Actually the messenger wasallam said it but it's a prob- lower probability because of all these criterion that we had that the Messenger Wasallam said this. It's a lower probability. Remember, this, this grading of hadith is a great game of probabilities. So it's more probable that the Messenger Wasallam said it because sometimes a guy who's got an impeccable memory and he, mashallah, he a very trustworthy guy, he hears a hadith from me. He might have misheard. Could be he misheard. It could be like there's so many hadith, remember, this hadith in Sahih Muslim we talked about a couple of weeks ago, uh, where the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a guy came to him and he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, what do I have to do in terms of my salah? He said, pray your five salah. He said, in terms of zakah, he said, pray your zakah. And he said, he said, do I have to give anything else? He said, no, illa anta tawwa. Except that you do nafal, extra, you know, supererogatory acts. You can do that, no problem, but this is what you have to do. This is your bare minimum. And he said, um, he said all these things, you know, five prayers and, you know, the zakat and the fast in Ramadan. And he said that, do I have to do anything else? And he said, no, except that you do some extra acts. And then he said, Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi when the guy went, he said, aflaha wa abihi in sadaqah. This is the hadith in Sahih Muslim, that this guy is successful. He will enter paradise, inshallah, if he's telling the truth and his father. That people like people are like, what? What does it mean by any sort? Mm-hmm. Like this muhaddithin basically they were like what? What does that even mean? But all the other remember I, I mentioned this in, in the previous sessions about who it was actually Shu'ba ibn al Hajjaj who heard it wrong. But he was Amir, he was known as Amir al Mu'minin fil Hadith, right? He was su- such a big Hadith scholar. It doesn't take anything away from him that he heard this wrong slightly. So it could be the person tells the truth, they've got an impeccable memory, once they heard it wrong, right? So in the other chains, it's aflaha wallahi, right? He's successful, uh, 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 and wallahi, if, uh, if he's saying the truth. So these are the other chains. So, but it could be a da'if person who's got a really bad memory, sometimes he could be telling the truth. Sometimes a, a, a liar can tell the truth, no? So this is something that's, uh, that's well known. That a, a liar can sometimes tell the truth. A guy with a weak memory, a person with a weak memory can sometimes, you know, remember things. And this is, this, that's why I said it's a game of probability. So the second to, uh, so this is uh, Al-Bukhari, when he says Hadith Mu'allaq. So generally Hadith Mu'allaq are, what, what are they? They are mardud, they are not accepted. Da'if, because they have uh, things that, they don't have the conditions of acceptance, and thus ittisal al-sanad. And this is when they have uh, Rawi's missing in the middle. So this last type is Hadith Mursal. Mursal and we've done... Um, okay, Hadith Mursal. Okay, Hadith Mursal, this is the last type of, uh, of Inqita. We talked about the other type of Inqita, right? Did we? I, I was doing two different things, so I'm not sure. We've done a Mu'adal. We've done Mu'adal. We've done Mudallas. We've done Mulqati. And this is the last one, Mursal, inshallah. Okay, so Mursal, in the dictionary, what does Irsal mean? To leave, absolute, for Arsala, he left it absolute, 
أطلق الإسناد ولم يقيده براو معروف اصطلاحا وما سقط من آخر سنده من بعد التابعي So right in the end of the uh, end of the chain the tabi'i says remember we, we uh, the three categories so a sahabi is a person who heard from the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam so if you heard from the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam what are you sahabi sahabi a tabi'i is a person who heard from a sahabi right so what are you if you heard from a sahabi tabi'i and then the person who heard from the tabi'i is tabi'i 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 so if we are narrating a hadith um, and then we narrate from you, narrate from a particular hadith, going all the way to the tabi, tabi. And then the tabi'i says, that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's just a, you know, a reroute from the, from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he doesn't mention who? Sahabi. He doesn't mention the Sahabi. He just says directly, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this hadith is known as hadith Mursal. Mursal. Okay? Um... So it could be that one of the great, it doesn't matter if it's a big companion or a little companion, right? Meaning a great companion in terms of age, you know, and in terms of knowledge, or it was a smaller one, you know. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كذا, that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said this, or he did this, or this was done in his presence. فعلى بحضرته, this was his tacit approval. Because we know that from the, the, the descriptions of the sunnah, is if something was done in the, pre- mes- uh, in the presence of the Messenger وسلم, and he didn't admonish it, he didn't say anything about it, then that's acceptance, that he accepted it. Because it's not from the, st- the status of a Nabi وسلم, that he would, wouldn't correct something that was wrong. He had to do that. That was his sort of prerogative to do. So, so in Sahih Muslim, in Kitab al-Buyu, he said, حدثني محمد بن رافق قال حدثنا حجين حدثنا ليث عن قيل عن ابن شعب سعيد مسيب أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم نهى عن بين مزابنة. So Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib, Musayyib, Musayyib, two ways of saying it, but I heard Musayyib, uh, he didn't like it when people call him Musayyib, Wallahu ta'ala alam. So he's a, a big tabi'i, but he never heard from the, he never, he wasn't alive at the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, when he was alive. So he couldn't have heard from the Messenger وسلم, but he was a big uh, tabi scholar. So they don't, he doesn't narrate the wasita بينه وبين النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم between him and the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. So this is called what? Hadith Mursal. When a tabi'i narrates straight from the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. Now in terms of accepting it, Hadith Mursal, there's a bit of difference of opinion there. Some of the scholars, for example the Hanafi scholars, do accept Marasil Hadith Mursal when it comes to Ahkam, when it comes to fiqh, they do accept it. Abu Dawood has a book called Kitabul Marasil. Funny story, um, once uh, brother Mahmoud he came and he was telling um, he's telling me oh, this hadith is Abu Dawood brother. Abu Dawood hadith Abu Dawood. Allah brother didn't know, subhanAllah, this hadith was actually in the Marasil, Kitabul Marasil. So Abu Dawood was a scholar who has a famous book called the Sunan of Abu Dawood. This is a famous hadith book where, you know, got many authentic hadith in there. So he's trying to show me this hadith, oh, we're praying wrong or something, I can't remember what it was, right? But, <laughs> but he comes and shows, brother, Abu Dawood hadith, you don't accept Abu Dawood? And then I'm like, brother, you got this on the internet. He's like, no, 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 Abu Dawood, Abu Dawood. And then I'm thinking, wait, this is an obvious mursal. <laughs> and then, uh, then I say, okay, what book is this? And it says in the bottom, uh, Abu Dawood Kitabul Marasil. It's a completely different book of Abu Dawood where he collected these Marasil narrations for another reason. Saying these hadiths are Mursal, that's why I'm collecting them. And Mursal, according to some scholars, they don't even accept them for Ahkam. Mm-hmm. So he's trying to prove to me something mm-hmm. that's Hadith Mursal. And he's saying, he didn't say anything, he said Abu Dawood narrated to me. Oh, what is this guy, man? So Kitabul Marasil Abu Dawood he had a book called Kitabul Marasil where he corrected he collected all the uh, Mursal narrations. So some people say that if a, from the Kiparu Tabi'in, if a great Tabi'i narrated a Mursal narration, then they'd accept it. For example, Imam Shafi says that he'd accept Mursal narrations from Shafi. So he accepts Mursal narrations from Sa'id ibn Musayyab, and likewise. But other scholars, such as the Hanafis, they had a difference of opinion in it. Some scholars said Da'if and Mardud. And this is according to majority of muhaddithin and the ashabul usul. Uh, some people say sahih. Uh, this is Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, and Ahmed ibn Hanbal. So if, if it fulfills all the conditions, then it's fine. The reason is, the tabi'i, who's a great tabi'i, he wouldn't narrate from the Messenger and lie about it. Because we know when it comes to the sahabi, 
So sometimes a Sahabi, a lot of, even the Sahabis mentioned here, I uh, forgot one of the Sahabis mentioned, that there's so many hadith, we actually didn't hear it from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We heard it from another Sahabi, but they didn't mention the name of another Sahabi. But the Sahabi by default, the Sahabi of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are all adul, they all have reached a level of kind of, a trustworthiness, right? They're all kind of trustworthy, so we don't even need to look into any of their biographies, uh, biographies or anything, because Allah says, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah was pleased with them, right? In the Qur'an, so we all acknowledge, this is a belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that all of the companions, they are all adul, they're all trustworthy in terms of the narrator, <coughs> in terms of the narration. That's why if a Sahabi says that so and so, if a Sahabi said the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, we don't need to look in the middle. But it's kind of impossible sometimes for a young companion who was born after, say, after the Hajj, after the um, Fatul Makkah, right? They were born after Fatul Makkah, which took place right in the end of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life, eighth Hijri, right? They were born after that. They were two years old when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. So how could they possibly have heard these hadith, right? So again, other scholars say if a Sahaba was too young, if a Sahabi was too young that they were born on this particular day, then you know, um, then they would not count as a Sahabi. They would count as a Tabi in terms of Hadith narrator. But this is narration, But this is another deeper discussion. Uh, there was a story I remembered of the most unluckiest guy. He was born. I don't know his name. We'll try and find it. He was born on the day that uh, Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died. And he, he got married on the day that Ali radiallahu ta'ala died, I think. And then he was just the unluckiest guy. He's narrated, he's narrated in the books of Adam as the unluckiest guy. We'll try and find him. But um, yeah, he was born right in the end of the Messenger Sallallahu lifetime, so he'd be known as Atabi. So this is kind of the final thing. So some scholars say Sahih, um, other scholars say we accept it, but we accept it with conditions. Um, the one condition they're from the Kitab Kibar Tabi'in and they heard from Thiqa, the trustworthy person, and there's a backup narration from it, and uh, this is kind of it. So these are the reasons why a hadith is um, the why a hadith is munqati. These are the four types. One is mudallas, one is munqati, hadith uh, mursal, and hadith mu'dal. We narrated these. We, we said all, of, all all these kind of things. We talked about mursal al-sahabi when a sahabi says says this. Who am akbar bihi sahabi عن قول الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وفعله ولم يسمعه أو يشاهده إما لصغر سنه أو تأخر إسلامه أو غيابه ومن هذا النوع حديث كثير صغار الصحابة كابن عباس بن زبير. so a lot of Ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنه's transmissions right Abdullah ibn Abbas he was a young companion he heard it from the other companions um, because he wasn't alive at this time or it could be the case that he heard it, he, he, they accepted Islam a lot later on. So some Sahabis narrate hadith about early Islam, but you think, huh? he accepted Islam after Fatul Makkah, after Ad Hajjatul Wada. How can he narrate this hadith? But he heard it from another companion, and we accept this. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Some famous books in the Marasil, the Marasil of Abu Dawood, which I mentioned, the book of uh, Marasil, the Marasil of Ibn Abi Hatim, and the Jami al Tahsil, the Hakam al Marasil, the Bay Alai. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, subhanakallah.